Is it 6.30 yet? It is 6.30 now. Okay. Well, I guess we can get started. I'd like to uh, welcome everybody to the January meeting of the Transportation Committee of Community Board 8. Welcome and Happy New Year to everybody. Um, and uh, we have a few things on our agenda tonight. We have a uh, number of enough members here at this point. Uh, let's see. You have quorum amongst your membership. Okay, good, good. <clears throat> so why don't we why don't we get to the first item on the agenda? I, I'm, I may have missed it. That we'll give his speech. No, Will should. You're right. Will, you should give your speech. You All right. Well, uh, I'll briefly because I see it's a lot of people who have been here before. But it, welcome if this is your first time joining us. You'll notice that you're muted and you're going to stay muted throughout the duration of the meeting, except for whenever one of the co-chairs calls on you. Um, as we move through the agenda, you'll have the opportunity to speak. Uh, you can participate by going to the reactions icon and pressing the raise hand button. Um, it says raise hand. It is not the wave or the thumbs up. If you press those, they will disappear. Only press the raise hand button once. If you press it a second time, your hand will go back down. If you're calling in from the phone tonight, it's star nine to raise your hand and then star six to unmute whenever you're called upon. Be on the lookout for a prompt asking you to confirm unmuting whenever you're called on. Um, if you're having any problems, the chat is available for technical support only to help with the Zoom software. It's not to ask questions of the co-chairs. They will never see those chats. If you're having, if you're uh, using an older version of Zoom, you may need to go to the participants section where you'll find the raise hand feature there. Finally, we encourage you not to raise your actual hand or wave at the screen. There's a lot of folks in the room and we may miss you. So if you're having any problems, chat me, I'm here to support. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Chuck and Craig. Thanks a lot. Okay. Our first, our first item is uh, an update uh, from the Chick Third uh, Avenue Chick Fil A situation. We had problems with uh, traffic and double parking and things like that. And is there, what do we have for that, Craig? Do we have anybody here, or or, or Will? Do we have anybody here who uh, can re is reporting on that? It looks like Jared Caldwell, who's the franchisee, is here, and he's the oh, one who actually requested um, okay. um, this discussion. So he wants to provide us with updates. So Jared, I think you're unmuted. Great. Yeah. Good, evening. Good evening, everyone. I'll be quick. Um, for those of you I don't know, my name is Jared Caldwell. I'm the operator of the Chick-fil-A on 3rd Avenue between 86th and 87th. And I was here a year ago and we were talking about some of the issues we were seeing um, on Third Avenue with conge congestion, the traffic, the bikes on the sidewalks. And so uh, la uh, it was, I think it was December of 21 when I was here and I promised I would come back with an update. And, um, and so I just wanted to share some things, maybe some um, where we were then, what we've done since, and then maybe some opportunities um, that are continuing on. Um, does that sound good? Yes, go, go ahead, Jerry. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so a year ago, we were having issue. Um, so some of the things that we had, we had some barricades up. We had, we were trying to keep bikes off of the sidewalk. Um, we had cars that were, you know, a lot of idling, a lot of double parking, a lot of just congestion in the area. Um, and so, since then, um, a lot of the bike traffic for us is delivery delivery drivers who, who deliver for DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub. So um, a lot of people in Upper East Side order food delivery through these services, and they they have independent drivers who come and pick up the food and bring it to the guests. Um, so some of the things that we've done over the last year that I, I think have, has, has helped somewhat, we removed all of our outside barricades to try to like to, to organize some of the, the stuff that was happening. Um, we, we did that pretty early last year. And I think it has like, I, I've been pleasantly surprised of how order, like I wouldn't say it's orderly, but it, it hasn't been a disaster um, by removing some of those barricades. We also, a couple of the biggest things we did, we worked with the third party companies and asked them like, hey, can you give us your orders quicker? So that when the drivers show up to get pick up these orders, we can have them ready and they can get out and, and not jam up the sidewalk, the street. Um, 
so that they've actually been worked um, worked with us to to do that. So we our turnaround times have been a lot better from that standpoint. And then one other big thing that we've done is um, when I was here last time, we were because of social distancing and COVID, and we were kind of working our way out of the pandemic. We were serving a lot of the food to the drivers outside of the restaurant. And since then, we've changed that. So all of everybody who's picking up orders from us from these companies come into our restaurant now. And so um, what it's left with, and if, if you've been by our restaurant anytime recently, there's a there's a mixture of bicycles or, you know, they use these mopeds. I know they're not supposed to allow to do that, but like there's empty vehicles um, on, you know, in the parking lane there. And then there's drivers who are sitting on the vehicles. And so those are two different groups of folks. So. The empty vehicles are people inside of our restaurant. <laughs> the porters, the people sitting on the bikes there, they're they're waiting for a, to, an order to come through on their app in the neighborhood. And so that one is like, feels out of my control. So what we've done is we've really focused on how can we, the drivers who are picking up orders from us, how can we get them in, get them out, get them on their way, like clear out the area. Um, and so I, th I think from like that standpoint, we're not, you know, it's, we're not serving this huge cluster of people outside. So um, I would say of like some, a couple of like opportunities or even like requests. Um, so two main things come to mind. One of the things that we had talked um, last time I was here, Department of Transportation, and we put a request in for, we talked about potentially a bike corral. So a place that when these drivers are coming inside, they have a place to lock their bike. Right now, it's either getting locked up on the tree beds or they basically just commandeer the entire uh, parking lane in front of between 86 and 87 from Third Avenue um, because we don't let it, we, we try to like keep them off the sidewalks as much as possible. And so that's still a pending issue. And the last one I uh, heard from DOT was it was being considered for this year. Um, and then the other thing is, um, there's been some different levels of enforcement um, in terms of idling and double parking um, by the NYPD. And there's been some good stretches where it's cleared some of that out. And it feels like the day after that happens, the 18 wheeler delivery trucks move in and, and kind of commandeer the space for seven or eight hours. And it kind of makes things even more congested than, than anything. So, um, I feel like we've been able to work through that issue a little bit just by having a lot of conversations, but um, it's, I would say like from, from my standpoint is like, I think we've done some of the things that we could do to alleviate the issue. There's still, there's still issues. And um, I think like, um, yeah. So better, it's not fixed obviously, but um, I feel like we've, we've I've, I've tried to we've tried to work do everything we can on our end to like kind of push push that ball on the the field and um the con congested and chaos is not not what i want at all so um okay, thank thank you jared while we have i know we have colleen uh, chattergoon here who's our liaison to dot and uh colleen do you know about what's going on with the bike uh, corral, Jared mentioned that was something that they had been talking to you folks about. Hey, so it's Colleen Chattagun from City Department of Transportation. We are working on the bike corrals. Um, it's been a slow process um, because we have so many other locations. But Jared, I will follow up with my colleague Dennis tomorrow and okay. I'll get back to you. OK, great. Thank you. And Jared, one question I had for you was when you said 18 wheelers, uh, those big, big, uh, those big trucks, where, where are they delivering to? So the, the two main ones that they, they, um, they pull up, they'll be in the second lane and they will unload and they will essentially load up little hand carts and deliver to apartment buildings. So it's, oh, it's, I see. Like you're, a distribution okay. Stuff. You're, you're talking <laughs> about, you're talking about, yeah, using that as it's, Drop off yeah. and are these the Amazons and Targets and yeah. whatever and and, and yeah, the other stuff? Fresh I, get, I get what they're trying to do. It just seems like one of the worst areas in the neighborhood to try to do it. I know it's and, probably and not good anywhere, but yeah, and and we've been aiming to try to bring in some of these um, e-commerce companies to try to 
talk to them and see if there's anything that we can do to work with them to deal with this because it's an issue not only on 30 Avenue near you, but all over as right. I'm sure you well know. Julie Menon's office has been very responsive to that issue. And as I've gotten a lot of help from them to like, to work through that. So, but it's just, I just wanted to be aware of like, it seems like there's like a vacuum when things clear out, like people, other, other forces swoop in. So track traffic at horrors of vacuum, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do we have any comments from the public? I see uh, Andrew Fine has uh, his hand raised. Can we unmute? Andrew. <clears throat> Thanks, Chuck. Much appreciated. Um, as you know, this has been a um, ongoing problem, double, triple parking, e-commerce, um, Fresh Direct, Amazon, the Uber Eats, all these people really just uh, taking um, public space for private enterprise. I would uh, I just wanted to thank Jared for coming on, giving it up. He's been very proactive um, on this issue. I know it's been an issue for 86th Street, the 86th Street Association in the neighborhood, but um, he has done a, a great job of um, being responsive and addressing it. I can I can vouch for him at least as a, uh, as a good neighbor, a, a, a solid, good corporate citizen. And, uh, and, you know, aside from the issue of the, the bikes and the, the the double parking of the delivery services. Uh, aside from that, Chick-fil-A has been active in the community, sending volunteers to clean every day around the corner for a property that's not even close to theirs around the corner at the bus stop, um, tending uh, and adopting garbage cans and sending volunteers to help clean the neighborhood. So uh, I, I, I just wanted to throw that in there that, uh, I know Chick-fil-A is extremely popular and uh, and there are some issues involved with Chick-fil-A, but I do commend Jared for taking a proactive role, both with the community board and with the community in general and uh, and trying to alleviate the issue. So thank you, Jared. And thanks for hearing me out, CBA. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. Um, let's see, I see the next, Peter Borak, I think has hand raised, Peter. Peter. Thanks. I'll, I'll be super quick. Thanks, Chuck. I just wanted to thank Jared. Uh, I can't believe it was a year ago that you came. And I think the consensus on the board was that we appreciated small businesses and that it wasn't your fault that people were congregating, but anything you can do to help would be appreciated. And uh, I think you've gone over and above. And sometimes people say they'll come back to the board. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have to drag them back. And uh, we just want to thank you for coming back to us and with the update. And I was actually there last week and I checked it out myself thinking about this from a year ago, and I didn't see actually a great buildup. And so hopefully that continues. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. I don't see any other hands raised to uh, uh, Paul, I guess. Oh, Paul, no, he just had a heart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Jared, then for coming to report. And Colleen's going to check and see about the bike corral situation, and we'll follow up on that. And uh, and the whole issue of these truck staging areas is one that we, as, as Craig said, is one that's really throughout our district. And we're trying to see if we can work with DOT to come up with some way to deal with that because it is an issue, certainly for in all areas. So we thank you. Great. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you and happy new year. Um, Okay, item number two is really a continued discussion of how to address parking placard abuse. We, you know, we've passed resolutions and there are some, there's some laws and things that have been put on the books. And I guess the question, you know, we don't know exactly how much has been implemented. The last meeting that we had on this, you know, there was an issue of, well, we we do have a number of things trying to computerize, make sure all these things are computerized, make sure we talked about centralizing um, the issuance of these placards. We thought of maybe discontinuing all, you know, voiding all placards and making everyone reapply. And, uh, but I don't know that we ever came up with any further 
resolutions or anything like that. And Craig, I don't know whether you... Uh, well, I was actually going to ask, not to put Colleen on the spot, but Colleen, if you're... Yeah, let's put her on the spot, definitely. <laughs> and, and whether you have an answer now, we'll want to see if you can um, come up with something and report back to us in a few minutes. Do you have any updates as to anything that's taking place um, in terms of New York City DOT actions in response to some of the bills that were passed in 2019 in regards to park and clockard re reform? I know I know the city has been working with um, the electeds on and, 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 and traffic enforcement NYPD on the placard reforms. In terms of anything new, um, I don't know of anything new that's coming up, but I will check with our, I can check with our intergovernmental to find out what the latest is on that. And I'll get back to you, Craig. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we appreciate that. And and it, I'll just ask, Will, if you don't mind, I had put together some information um, that we posted on the November um, agenda website. Can you, if possible, just attach a link to the chat so this way people can pull up what our last resolution was and they may be able to reference what some of the legislation that was passed in 2019 that I was referencing was. Um, and that could also help this facilitate this discussion. You said November? It was November 2022. Okay. I can put it in the chat. Just look for that in a few minutes. Okay. Great, thank you. <clears throat> and any other thoughts on the... Right, so, so I had put in there just, on, and again, um, I don't know if Colleen has any answers to these. One was the status, the questions that we had um, were the status of deliverables from the 2019 um, package of placard bills, the status of the digital pay by plate program, which was initially anticipated to be implemented by 2021, then it was pushed back to 2022. Obviously that hasn't happened. Um, I'm guessing that there's no update um, and Colleen would report back to us if there was. And then also, the status of funding for the parking placard enforcement unit, which I think was also part of um, that package. So those are some of the questions that I think we had that were, we were hoping to get some insight on to help us determine a potential pathway forward. And just referencing in this, I'm pulling this from the slides that we, um, that I had compiled back in November. In the past, we had compiled a list of potential strategies that we may want to consider at a later date, now being the later date, um, including asking the city council to host a hearing and report, um, and issuing a report assessing the impact of the 2019 laws, creating dedicated placard parking zones, restricting placards only to vehicles with New York state license plates, creating a uniform digital placard used by all issue, issuing agencies and having each agency determine who should be issued digital placards, requiring all current placard holders to reapply for the new digital placards, requiring placard holders to log their usage to identify the official purposes and expected hours of use, supporting newly proposed city council legislation that would permit the use, permit the general public to report illegal placard use and receive monetary rewards for doing so. Um, I believe that's one of the bills that's that was drafted. Um, and it was discussed in the current um, council um, um, year. Total elimination of all agency issued placards and prohibition of all agency pl um, placard parking in Manhattan, delegating one city agency as a centralized issuing agency for all issued placards, shifting traffic enforcement to DOT from NYPD, reevaluating how and where traffic enforcement is deployed, pressuring elected officials and agencies and the city to report on the status of implementation. I just mentioned that. Exploring the idea of charging a fee for obtaining a permit and improved reporting on the progress of transitioning to the digital placard program. So those are all the ideas that were put forward. We didn't actually discuss any necessarily in depth, but that could be a starting point if anyone was triggered by any of the thoughts that I had mentioned. So I don't know if anyone wishes to comment at this point or has any thoughts right now, or if not, um, we can um, we can always defer it. Oh, now I see hands coming up. Yeah, All right, well, so. yeah Evelyn, Evelyn 
<laughs> David raised has raised her hand. Why don't we uh, unmute Evelyn? Hi, hi. Good evening. I just have one little question. How do you know if it's an illegal placard? I mean, how does anybody know if they have a license plate with a, um, you know, they've got a problem wheelchair bound person, uh, and their placard is also the exact same license with wheelchair. That seems to me that would be a legitimate placard. So I'm not seeing so many placards in the neighborhood. I mean, actually. So, no, so it, it's a question. How, how do you know if it's an illegal placard? You'd have to all, look it up through the system. Right. That's correct. I mean, if the, if the placard has the license plate printed on it, there's uh, no way you can get a placard without registering and proving, you know, I, I know at one point I was thinking I was going to have an operation, my leg, how was I going to drive? And somebody gave me forms and I'm like, oh my, you know, the doctors have to fill it out for this and that. So, so, so it's, I, nothing's happened, but so it, I was investigating, but so for somebody to get, I mean, how do you get, how do you, how do you know if it's illegal? Where, where did this idea of illegal placards come up? That, well, that's my question. Well, let, me, let me actually interject and just mention that there, one of the bills that was passed into law back in 2019 which is now local law three, which was supposed to have become effective starting December 31st, 2021, was would have, would require or requires the NYPD to create a centralized electronic system to track all city issued parking permits. So that speaks to the need and, and it's recognized that there is insufficient tracking and many of the placards out there may not necessarily be authentic. And we know that. Listen, Evelyn, Evelyn, you can go by and look at many cars, and I've seen it many times over the years, which have placards that are so obviously phony that were written out. They're press placards, they're union placards, they're department of so-and-so placards, uh, you know, educate, department of education placards. And uh, it's sometimes very obvious, but they're all supposed to be registered. and. Uh, that's the whole idea of getting them all computerized and and to make sure that you can instantly find out whether it's a it's it's a valid placard. But there are there are many, many thousands of placards that are just phony. And I've seen them and, and and you don't need to go to any kind of database to tell that if somebody just looks at them. But they don't pay attention to them and, and they're not enforced. And um you know, because it's not something, you know, traffic enforcement, as we've been told at our committee by the people who run traffic enforcement for our area, they don't have many people out there. And that's why we want to get that. We want to get, we would like to get the enforcement transferred to the department of, you know, the, the people who do the meter stuff, because it's the same kind of thing. And there are a lot of those people and they're around all the time. And so you get a lot more of that done. The Bloomberg administration cracked down and did eliminate the uh, a lot of the placards. Unfortunately, over the last eight years, they, a lot of them came back. And now we're trying to see if we can get a, uh, if we can do something about that, because it's a big problem in our area. And but <clears throat> let's see if there's anybody else. Uh, uh, Leah Hanlon, let's, uh, Leah has her hand up from the public. Yes, hi. Um, I don't spend a lot of time down by the 19th precinct, but I used to spend a lot of time next to near the precinct in East Harlem. And um, there were dozens of cars parked um, on the sidewalk along the adjacent streets. They would just perpendicularly park up on the sidewalk. Um, and I don't recall whether they had um, placards per se, but they were obviously the, the cars of cops who worked at that station. And um, since they seem to be one of the biggest perpetrators of this kind of abuse, uh, I'm kind of wondering how the, or perhaps it's not surprising that the um, 
that the enforcement has been so bad? And I mean, how, how is that going to be dealt with? Well, that's that's the other issue. <laughs> the police are the ones who regulate issuing permits. And the police cars are one thing, but a lot of times police have their own cars that they have placards that are in there. And that's and the, and and that's something that's also out of control. You know, uh, the, if I could just add, I believe those are the car, the personal cars of cops who drive in from the outer boroughs or the suburbs right. where they live. And they just park anywhere. I, I used to need to get through that sidewalk and I could barely do it. It was totally right. covered with cars. Yeah. And that's an, that's an issue. And that's why one of the things we want to see is a centralized place for issuing those kinds of permits. But obviously, the you know, police issue their own permits. And sometimes they just write their own permits on there and put it in the windshield. And nobody, as you rightly say, I mean, no, none of the police enforcement people are going to enforce against uh, one of their own people. And that's been an issue, too. I mean, that's not that's an issue. That's not the biggest issue. There are just many, many issues uh, like that. Um, let's see. Ben Ratner, I think, is the next member of the public that I see. <clears throat> Can we unmute Ben? Yep. Hello. Um, one thing I'm curious about, because um, I've spoken with the NYAPD about this before, but they couldn't give me an answer, is the self-enforcement zone. So around the 19th precinct and other places um, where uh, precincts are around the city. Um, they say they have this zone that's kind of a soft limit as to where they can basically park and they control themselves. I'm wondering if there is any way we can get more official information on that because there's no information in it that I could find online um, or anywhere else about it. But the 19th precinct did tell me that they have self-enforcement zone around the precinct. Well, I can imagine that's probably right. But I don't know if it's an official policy but we've you know it's not something that we've ever necessarily heard about uh, but i i believe it i mean the whole idea is that the they're supposed to be people are supposed to be issued placards uh, for specialized circumstances and not that many when it comes to the police even if they have to bring come in from the outer boroughs or wherever they come in from and uh you know part of the problem is that as you know i mean a lot of members of the police department don't live in in the city or near where they are so they do bring in their cars uh, i'm sure and that's that's part of an issue but i think again it goes to who's issuing the permits and how is it controlled and uh, that's not something that is well controlled certainly when it comes to the police issues okay let's uh, i don't see any Members of the public, uh, why don't we go to the board here and uh, see, I'm not sure whether it was Laura. I think Lori may have had her hand up earliest, actually, before Michelle. I'm going to call on Lori. Michelle next. Sorry. Because I th saw, I think Lori was earlier, actually. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. Um, and, and thank you for uh, whoever was the person who, who brought up the last issue about the police, because one of the things, I mean, as you know, this is one of my favorite issues. Um, and um, but I've always been confused about who is the ultimate authority in terms of um, issuing the uh, the parking placards. And I think what you said and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you said is that it is the police department. Is that correct? Well, for police permits, yes. No, no, but not for police. I'm talking about like for other. No, like no, someone... they're not the ultimate authority for that. It, it, they're issued. Part of the problem, Lori, is that the permits are issued by a number of different agencies. Oh, OK. And, yeah. And right. so and we want to and we want to centralize. We would like to see it centralized so there could be some control. That's part of the issue. Here. In fact, one of the laws that became effective um, in 2020 required each city agency making use of city issued parking per permits to develop a plan regarding the distribution and use of them by their individual agencies. Um, and the city was supposed to um, review such plans and develop a comprehensive plan that incorporates each agency's individual plan. Again, I don't 
there's no, no knowledge to or, uh, to um, at this point that this has actually happened, but it's, right. it's supposed to have happened on the law. Right. Okay. I, Nothing's I, happened. I yeah, I mean, because I, this is what I um, I, I think is uh, a very big part of the problem is that because you have all of these different agencies um, issuing the permits, you know, and then it's kind of like a free for all. Like people see, well, this person has a permit, so like, why why don't I get one? And and they just like make it up. Um, so um, I and I don't know what the answer to this is, but. Um, I know that my permit comes from the DOT, you know, my, my, and my permit has the, um, the QR code on it. So all anybody has to do is like walk around and, you know, click the QR thing and like it's done. So we have the technology to do this. Now, the question is, do we have um, uh, a mechanism for all of the different agencies to um, you know, submit the number of people that they have a permit. And, you know, like I, I agree with the idea of having it all centralized. I remember during the Bloomberg um, administration, I had a friend who used to work for, actually, she's still, I think she just retired from the, um, uh, not the DOT, the, the, the water people, whoever that is. The DEP. 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 Thank you. Thank you. DEP. And she worked for the DEP and she originally had a parking permit. And then during this sweep and reduction that Bloomberg instituted, um, hers was taken away. Um, so and, you know, guess what? She lived and like everything was fine. Um, so um, I, I just I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that I that we have to have some sort of a um, centralized uh, uh, authority, because otherwise it's just going to continue to go on and on and on. I mean, I, I understand that the police department wants to do. And, and even if we even if we say, all right, the police are going to do what they're going to do. So, you know, let them let them do it. Um, but you have all the other agencies, you know, and they're all doing they've all got people who are coming in from, you know, the suburbs and stuff. And it's just, the whole thing is just a mess. So. Um, I just want to say that I I support the idea of having a centralized uh, list. Okay, that's it. you know I think the things that uh, Craig was laying out. I mean, there are a lot of good things, and some of them have been passed into law, but none of them is really have really been implemented with the way they ought to be. And I think that's the problem now, because there are solutions to this that could get a handle on the problem, but no one seems to have made it a priority at this point because there are probably too many people who have permits who are interested in it. Right, right. <laughs> I mean, that's, right. right, that's obviously right. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Michelle, so let's unmute Michelle Bernbaum. Yeah, so these are some of the points I was gonna make. Frankly, I have the least amount of uh, sympathy for this topic because to my mind, there are so many, so much abuse of our streets and the commercialization of our streets and like giving private companies the right to rent cars off our streets and trucks off our streets, that the fact that we have our own city workers having a courtesy to use our streets is not so, um, so disturbing to me, let me say. Uh, with respect to the police, we give teachers the courtesy of having placards all over the city in front of schools. And uh, to me, the police having placards is a very sympathetic group. So I don't have any uh, complaints about that. What I would say is about the tracking capability. Um, in the vendor community, for example, I co-chair the vendor uh, committee. And many agencies through the city, we have electronic capability. For example, in the vendor situation, all the new carts are being equipped with chips. Why is this a good idea? If you could track the chips both as to location and as to whether or not a food cart returns to his commissary every day as is required by law for cleaning and that kind of thing. That would make uh, enforcement a lot easier 
for health reasons, et cetera. And yet the electronic chips are being put on the carts, but nobody has written the program, as far as I know, to actually put this into, um, into use. And it's the same with this. If we, uh, with a resolution called for a centralization and electronic tracking of legal and illegal placards, that's a good thing if we did that resolution. If we didn't do it, I suggest we do, but um, that makes sense to me and it makes things enforceable, it makes it trackable. But my point is that there are a lot of things in the city that with new, and it's not so new anymore, but with, with uh, I'll use the word new technology, would make life so much more efficient and so much easier and enforcement so much more, so much easier and make so much more sense that the city in on many, many levels just never puts into effect, although the technology is there. And with this technology, you have a diminished need for manpower, which is something we're suffering from. So um, the fact that we have a solution the fact that we have methodology uh, and the fact that we keep chasing our tails here, um, I'm not sure we should waste uh, more time on this. As for using the meter people for this, I've been calling for that for ages as because they're on the street and they're walking, their job is to walk the street. Why aren't they involved in, in street vendor enforcement? And yet we can't get that to happen. As they walk by, if they were briefed with vendor law, for example, or they had the capability of seeing, of identifying an illegal placard, they are out there. They're looking at what's parked, but nobody seems to want to involve them. And they're under the jurisdiction of the police department, but there nobody seems to want to involve them in any other enforcement except meter enforcement. <laughs> so altogether, my issue is uh, the technology is there for the solution. We know what the solution would be. The violations by city workers are not such a big concern to me as other workers are given these placards. And um, to the extent that we have a resolution, and if we don't, let's have one on centralized and electronic tracking, I wouldn't give this issue much more time. Thank Again, you. Again, I'll just speech. remind you that that's one of the laws that was passed, if you look at right. <laughs> Well, okay, even worse. <laughs> In other words, it's one of the laws. <clears throat> so it's now it's on the books, and it's one of the laws, and they're not enforcing it, and they have the mechanism to enforce it. So how much time is this worth? How much more time is this worth? Yeah, it seems as if a lot of what we think is <coughs> rational, reasonable has actually been passed into law. It's just a matter of it actually being implemented. And, and that's true funded. with everything all over the city, isn't it? But here, when you talk about funding, uh, yeah, they need funding to set up an electronic system, but they don't have to have ongoing funding for as much manpower if you actually use the technology that we have available to us, which somehow the city seems to be very resistant to. It has the capability of doing that in multiple agencies. Well, do we need to pass another resolution? We passed one, didn't we already, about right. implementing this? We, we passed one in 2021 um, where we didn't talk about this specifically. Well, we actually, we say we said in that resolution that we wanted the city to enact laws and provide funding to immediately initiate the process of retiring all agency issued placards and requiring all holders to reapply for a digital placard with a digital identifier that can be verified by enforcement agents using handheld devices. Well, then, that's not exactly the same. If we would just target a new resolution, I don't think we should go through that again because they passed the laws. If we, you want to target tonight, I can't make that suggestion now because I've spoken, but to simply say to please put into effect electronic tracking of, of placards as per the laws that are, you know, that exist now and as per our advocacy and try to get this under control. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend any more time on it. I think it would just spin in our wheels. Well, does anyone want to propose a resolution 
is along the lines that Michelle mentioned. I don't know if Elizabeth Rose is next. Let's, let's unmute Elizabeth. Um, thank you. Can I speak before I propose a resolution? Well, you should. You should. Generally, you have to propose the resolution first, and then you can speak okay. to it if it's seconded. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. I'm sort of. I'm not mentally organized enough yet to really propose a resolution. Okay. So I will throw a straw man out there um, that people can then. I will. I will. Would then like to appreciate speaking to, and then um, hopefully people can improve it. Um, actually, I can't, I'm, I'm not meant, I, I'm not organized enough mentally to do that. So let me just speak for a moment. Okay. Um, I'm a full disclosure, uh, the distribution of parking placards, city issued parking placard placards under the department of education was actually in my purview when I was. Uh, deputy chancellor and chief of staff to the former deputy chancellor. Um, so I want to just put a few facts out there because there seems to be a lot of misinformation about how placards are assigned to agencies, how they get created, um, and how people keep placards. Placards are an annual process as it already exists. Uh, city placards have the year clearly identified on them. Um, they, the internal agency distribution is redone every single year. Um, the number of placards that each agency is assigned is identified every single year. Um, it is one of the most stressful experiences I've ever had is telling people that they can't keep the same number of placards as their department had in the prior year. Um, so some of these elements of, you know, given their placards and reapply, it's it sort of, to me, misses the challenge here. Um, there are also some good references to uh, Bloomberg tried to reduce the number of placards. Uh, a couple of examples where we tried to reduce the number of placards was to uh, limit the number of placards given to teachers. Um, and this of course, was uh, generated a lawsuit which uh, was upheld, um, and therefore DOE is now required to provide a placard to every single uh, teacher at every single school who requests one. Um, whether or not they can find a parking spot to use such placards is a separate issue. Um, so for me, it's much less about, based on my experience, it's less about the issuance of placards, and it is far more about the, um, um, what's the word that I am looking for? The enforcement of somebody looking at cars that are parked on the, on the streets and do they have, if they are in an inappropriate parking spot, do they have an appropriate placard? So it seems to me that whoever is saying that they don't have the manpower to do that is ignoring the people whose jobs it is to generate revenue for the city by going around and issuing parking tickets. That is the natural enforcement mechanism because effectively placard abuse is, you know, should be generating a parking ticket. That's what they are. They are parking violations. Um, and those, there's a group of people whose job it is every day to walk up and down streets at, on very clear schedules to issue parking tickets to cars in violation. And based on the number of parking tickets my children get when they are home from college, they do an excellent job. Um, so the why are they not enforcing placard abuse seems to me to be a much more, it's gotta be coming from somewhere uh, higher up in the agency that manages parking ticket violations. And that is where the challenge must lie. So I would like to see um, a resolution that really focuses on how can we strengthen enforcement um, and the benefits of enforcement 
because I really don't think this is about the issuance and it's not about the, you know, I, I think the QR code on every city agency card is a great idea. I think the having uh, the ability to look up, does this car in fact have a city agency placard in some database? Great idea. Um, and maybe that would help, but that sounds to me to be much more of like a citizen's brigade kind of thing to highlight the issue um, as a pincer around why aren't people whose job it is to issue parking violations issuing parking violations to people who have clearly illegal placards. Thank you. Well, I think they're tied together, Elizabeth, because if you have an electronic database that's easily referred to, that makes enforcement of it much easier. And I, so I think the two of them are tied together. But I, mean, um, what I agree with that. Yeah. Um, Stephanie Reckler I hasn't spoken before. Uh, Stephanie, can we unmute Stephanie? I am confused about these placards. Are they for specific locations? And no. for for instance, so if you have a placard to because you're a school teacher at PS6, you can park you can use it to park any anywhere? Usually they try to set aside some spaces for teacher parking sometimes. But uh I think uh, Elizabeth probably knows more about that. Elizabeth, can we unmute Elizabeth for a minute on that? Maybe you can answer that. Yes. Any teacher? To the location of their school. So it will give the name and number of the school uh, to which they are assigned, and it may also sort of say the street where the parking spots that are reserved for that school are located, but they are school specific. There are a very, very few number of teachers who would have an itinerant uh, placard. Um, that's a very small number. But, but for instance, Lori, your, your placard must be good for the whole city. Yeah, no, that's different if you're handicapped. Yes. Handicap permits are different. They're de that's wherever you can find a, you know, any kind of a space, a legal space. And, and similarly, as um, a senior central employee at the DOE, my parking permit was citywide. It was, if I in an emergency need to go to a school, I can park anywhere so I can get to that school. So it's definitely, it's a combination there. Some areas that are set out specifically, but there's some permits that allow you to go any place and park there. I know I know Lennox Hill used to issue um, passes to put in your front window when you parked on, when you parked on Park Avenue uh, in front of the hospital. And for some reason, they've taken these, they no longer use these placards. And they're because I think, uh, they were issuing too many to to staff and not doctors, and now uh, they've they've done away with their placards because of the abuse of too many, and now only doctors with MD plates can park there. But I I, I think there's so, it sounds like there's so much abuse that the city should um, rethink the whole process. And uh, QR codes are, are, are the way to go. And I think it, it is asking too much of the traffic police to actually read what is on the placard and to make the judgment, is this teacher parked in the right space in front of their school. I, I think it's just too difficult. It's I think the idea is though if it's digitally registered in a database, then they can check that very quickly and very easily. And you know that they would have something that and that and that's why it goes hand in hand with enforcement, I think. It's two are, are, are 
I think, um, I mean, it seems to me that we may want to focus the resolution on making sure that they're all registered in a way that uh, e easily accessible and having the same people that enforce meter parking in, enforce these kinds of uh, things. Right. I'm not even sure that those are official legal. Yeah, I, I, no, I think that was a, I, I, you're talking about the hospital ones. Yeah. I don't think so either. Right. And, <laughs> right. And there's a law on the book actually that says that if you have an. Hey, just a reminder for anyone like, including at Bedford Hills, you want to be one of the first six cars selected. Sorry. So I don't know. Someone was unmuted. Yeah. I don't know there's, what that is. One of the New York City parking laws actually allows people who drive vehicles with MD license plates um, registered to New York State to be able to um, park for up to three hours in a in certain like no parking zones. Um, so that's how doctors are typically able to park um, as opposed to having a permit that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So the Thank rule you. is, and I'll just read from the language here, um, where parking is prohibited by signs, but not where stopping or standing is prohibited. A duly licensed physician or dentist may park his or her motor vehicle identified by MD, OP, or DDS, New York registration plates on a roadway adjacent to hospitals or clinics for a period not to exceed three hours. At other locations where parking is prohibited by signs, but not where stopping or standing is prohibited, a duly licensed physician may park his or her motor vehicle for a period not to exceed one hour while actually attending to a patient in the immediate vicinity. Thank you. Also okay. one of the also one of the things that are abused because people don't just park for one hour, they park the whole day, you know, with MD plates. We've had that come before our committee too. So I mean it's 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 a you know it's a big issue problem. Um, Michelle do you want to make a do you want to make a resolution okay can we unmute michelle i do um i'll make a resolution and then speak to it um okay. so my resolution is that in light of the fact that the city has laws on the books that speak to the enforcement of the use of placards that are issued by the city and or state, I guess, um, the city uh, must put into effect an enforcement protocol that can enforce those laws that already exist. And the fact, and my suggest, I mean, we could, I'll work on the wording, but, and my suggestion would be to use an electronic method and create an electronic database of placards issued so that an enforcing agent could just scan that plate or registration and know immediately whether or not that placard is legal. Let me go on to say that in an ideal world, that scan would generate a violation. In other words, it wouldn't just be like you're telling him and now you know, he's got to write a ticket or anything, but it would actually generate the violation. And the fact that all this is already in play, they just have to put this into, you know, into action. Let me just speak to a minute. It has nothing to do well, with well, be, be, Before you- Oh, I need a second. I mean, and and I, I'll welcome to the whereases. You guys can write the whereases but do you, but do you, before I can submit them. You want to say something about having the enforcement in the same agency that's enforcing traffic yeah, tickets. Well, the today. thing the thing is, yes, <clears throat> I don't want to repeat our previous resolution, which was very broad. And the fact is that they put some of that into law now. So I don't want to make it a. They duplicate. didn't put that into law, though. I don't believe. <laughs> they no, did. they didn't put into law the fact that it's all under the same agency. Right. But. Um, I don't, I mean, that would be fine. And I have no objection okay. to that. Okay. But if you had an electronic system, the truth is it wouldn't matter because all of the agencies 
would have access to that database and no yeah, matter who did the ticket it would come up as a as a violation it's a question um, of who's out in the field though that and is really well, going to be looking that, at this okay stuff. That's well the issue. i would i would say with a recommendation to employ the meter uh, I don't know what their formal name is. We always call them the meter ticket people. Right. <laughs> I'm sure they have a, a better name than that. That yeah. they put in, that they be um, <clears throat> the lead agency in enforcement. Okay. But is that, there a, is there a that second? Shouldn't, Let yeah, me see. Is there a yeah, second to that? Say that shouldn't mean that the police or others couldn't write these tickets. So is there a second to that and we'll clean up the wording? Yeah. And then I just have another comment I'd like to make. Yeah. Is there, has anyone, does anyone want to second that resolution here? Who's, uh, I don't know. Well, then I have to tell you when I said we should put this issue aside and not spend any more time on it, now that there's not even a second for that resolution. <laughs> I Sharon Pope Marshall better. seconded it. No, Sharon, oh, okay. no, Sharon, <laughs> Sharon. Sharon Pope Marshall is seconded. Okay. okay great, Sharon. Okay, and, go. and before you go on, just, just yeah. um, I want to make sure that this is different from what we passed in 2021, in which we requested that traffic enforcement as a special division of the NYPD be the sole parking placard enforcement agency. Well, I wouldn't, I, it is different because I wouldn't, if that's referring to the meter people, I wouldn't say sole enforcer because that implies that anybody else, you know, if it's a foot patrolman or anybody else who, I'm sure there has to be an appropriate ticket book. You know, these things are never just easy, which is why a scan that would just generate a ticket um, and which would directly go to the enforcing agency would be the way to go. It's not such a sophisticated process that somebody couldn't write it. But I wouldn't say soul just because I wouldn't want to take it out of their hands, but um, out of anybody else's hands. But we are now passing a resolution or talking about a resolution about laws that are in effect. We're asking for an enforcement process, which is different than what the preceding resolution said, which if my memory serves, uh, also asked that there was, you know, laws put into effect that would. But now we're talking about enforcing the laws that are. Yeah, I think it's sufficiently different that we're okay. That, okay, yeah. did you want any, Michelle? I did wanted you to make any? another comment about yeah, MD okay. plates. I had an MD plate uh, for, I won't say how many years. Would, unless I was parked, in a spot that said MD plates only, if I was parked or my husband was parked, I should say, in a neighborhood for medical reasons, we would always get a ticket. The only time you were absolved from getting a ticket was if you were in an MD, you know, where it specifically said parking MD plates only. So if that's the law as you read it, Craig, Nobody on the street knows it except you. <laughs> I, I, and I, I could I could say that uh, with certainty. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you, Michelle. And I didn't know it until I just until you just it. read it. <laughs> Let, let's go, with Paul Crickler. I think is hasn't spoken here. So, uh, Paul, why don't thank you, you very much, Chuck. I just have a friendly amendment to offer. And again, um, Craig, I'm not sure if this is covered by the resolution from last from two years ago anyway um i'd like to add to what i support what michelle has said i'd like to add that we'd like to see enforcement of this moved away to dot and away from the nypd i think that would be a much more effective way of getting this enforced and also if it's automatic and everything you know tickets are generated i don't no know if dot has a does dot have an enforcement arm uh no, we, we're not an enforcement agency. Unfortunately, we don't have that mechanism. That could be the problem, Paul. If they don't, you know, we we already have. I, I don't, I think if we gave it to the same people who were doing it as Mich like in Michelle's resolution or the primary responsibility, um, I think that would be very effective because they're out there every day. They're walking around. It's easy for them to do that. They look, they walk these blocks just looking at car windows, essentially looking for um, things that 
you know, overdue if they're parking or if they've parked at a meter, if they're, you know, overstayed and stuff like that. So in I which think, case, I will fully support um, the proposal from Michelle. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Judy Schneider, I think, has not spoken. So let me, let's have Judy. Do I understand the resolution correctly that it says specifically that traffic enforcement will be uh, that group, which is part of the police department? It got moved from DOT to the police department, that they are the ones to do the enforcement of the placards? Is that what the resolution says? Because if it does, I cannot support that. These people, these traffic enforcement people need a lot of training. They can't do their own job. They pay attention to traffic. They don't pay attention to pedestrians. No, no you're no. a terrible no. job a problem with them. Judy, it's not those traffic enforcement people. It's the people who go along and read, you know, the meter people, people who enforce over, you know, parking. That, parking uh, enforcement agents, I believe. Parking enforcement agents. It's, yeah, people who do that. It's not the I mean, same. The people as, who give tickets when the meter has run correct. out. Correct. Correct. Ah, well, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's who it, that's I, who it is. I didn't understand it as that. That I could support. But okay. I certainly could not support traffic enforcement because they have a hard enough time doing the job they're supposed right, to. Right, right. No, they're a very small unit, and they I agree with you completely. They don't, you know, they they have uh, we would not give you wouldn't it'd be a big mistake to give it to them. I agree. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, okay. Let's see. Elizabeth Rose, do you want a further comment before we hopefully Just vote a, on this? A, a point of information. Um in this conversation, it has sounded to me like we believe there are two different groups of people who give parking tickets, that there's a group of people who are responsible for parking meters. Um, is it the same group of people who is responsible for alternate side of the street parking tickets? Yeah. Or are those? Okay. Yeah. I think the placard violation should fall well, we'll literally get the, right. the same purview okay. as the people who are responsible for right. all other parking violations and ticketing for parking violations. Correct. Parking. Yes. Yeah. We'll, Thank we'll you. make sure that's right. You're, you're correct. That's that's exactly right. For parking, parking violations. Yep. OK, so um, can we vote on this? I don't think. Uh, uh, Craig, do you want to make sure how many people are here? Yeah, let me if we could just lower Elizabeth and Michelle's hand, then I'll just read the roll. Wait, I, Michelle, I, I promise I'll come back to you. Um, so I have myself, Chuck, Alita, Billy, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Rose, I should say, John Phillips, Judy, Lori, Michelle, Paul, Peter, Rebecca Dangor, Sharon, and Stephanie. Anyone else? And, and Judy. Did I say Judy already? You did or? say, I I did. You did okay. say Judy. Did you yeah. say Rita Popper? Oh, no, Rita, Rita Popper. I don't think you said Rita Popper. Right, Rita. It's here. Oh, okay. I guess. Thank you. I did miss Rita. Okay. Before we vote, Michelle, you wanted to say one last thing? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I do. Um, one thing is I want to make sure that what's in the resolution calls for the electronic. In other words, I I, I yeah. don't want to just talk about enforcement without specifically saying no. No, you know, that we have, okay, that that's in there. The other thing I want to say is when a resolution is on the floor and there are people that are putting out suggestions or friendly amendments or whatever, the person who made the resolution should not be muted so that I had, I would have had, and others would have an opportunity to accept the, the friendly uh, comment or not, but if you if you mute somebody, I've been texting the office, but to no avail. So I I don't think, as a general rule, um, that if you make a resolution, you should remain unmuted until it's written and clarified so that it's ready for a vote. Thank you. But I just want to make sure that the electronic thing yeah. was up there. Oh sure, of course. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So all those in favor. Uh, or I should say maybe 
why don't we say all those who are opposed uh, or um, want to abstain or anything else could should raise their hands. Uh, we'll assume everyone else is in favor. Um, Alita, let's call Alita Camp. We recognize Alita. Yeah, hi, I joined late. I heard most of Elizabeth Rose's comments. And so do you think that I should, I am in a position to vote or not? That's my question. No, it, it, I, I, I think you've been here enough to hear okay. the discussion and the resolution. And I will lower my hand and vote yes. Okay, thank. So I think we're unanimous there. Okay, good, thank you. That sounds good. Let's let us go to... Let's see if we yes. let us go. The next thing is the request for additional traffic control agents at suggested intersections near the Queensboro Bridge. There already are some, and I know this is something that Judy I want to recognize Judy Schneider because this is something that's been on her mind for a while. And why don't you, uh, you know, discuss this or lead off the discussion anyway, Judy? Well, my prior comment. The agents that we do have need better training. Barry's been saying that for 30 years now. Um, but we don't have enough agents in the bridge area. And traffic is gets backed up on 2nd Avenue. Uh, the FDR drive, three exits, the entrances and exits off the bridge. And um, this came up um, in uh, Craig and Alita's meeting under congestion pricing. And really... The problem is going to get worse when the congestion pricing goes in and people are coming off at 63rd Street now because they're not having to pay. Having to pay a, a congestion pricing fee, so I don't know what we can do at this time, but I think if Colleen's still on the call that d we need to make a recommendation to DOT that they need to look at the 59th Street Bridge area and see what they can do about putting more full-time traffic control agents that are properly trained on 2nd Avenue, 3rd Avenue, 62nd and 3rd, um, down to York Avenue where the um, FD, uh, FDR entrances and exits are. And also on York Avenue, I want to remind everybody, we still have the water main and sewer work that started in 2015 and was supposed to be finished years ago. And now they added another two years. It's not until the end of 24. So that it's, it's just horrendous. I don't know what else I can say. And um, maybe Colleen, I don't know if we want, need to pass a resolution, but maybe Colleen can go back and talk to her commissioner and see if they can allocate money for more traffic control agents. I know that the sewer and water main, they have to have control uh, traffic control agents because it's anybody doing major construction has to have it. But nowhere else um, are there regular agents. There are agents at the bridge on 2nd Avenue. There are two of them. If anybody thinks that two of them is sufficient on 2nd Avenue, just come look at the traffic during the day. So Judy, uh, request for traffic enforcement agents that have to go to NYPD. Um, I, I have a contact I can share with Will tomorrow. And if you can provide Will with the locations, or if Will, um, you, you know, I'm more than happy to share those that information with Will so we can reach out to them and let them know of the critical um, locations you're requesting. Yeah, um, I, I realize it's NYPD because that's who the agents belong to. You gave them to the police, you had them. But it really would be helpful if the police talked with the head of DOT and they got together on this because you folks know what the traffic problems are in the area. And yes, it's not your problem, but yes, you have input that you could give the police. I know I've spoken with Commissioner Pinkar about this over, over the time he's been commissioner. This is not a first time discussion. Sure, we can work with traffic enforcement on that. Um, so maybe you and Will could put something together and Craig and 
Chuck could have a meeting. Uh, if they want me to come, Barry to come, that's fine. Okay. It isn't going to get you... any. It isn't going to get any better with congestion pricing. It's only going to get worse. I think it would be helpful if uh, DOT and the uh, traffic enforcement would put get together and talk about this and see if there's something more could be done. And 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 I'll just add. And Judy alluded to this. Um, for those who aren't um, fully versed in the congestion pricing plan, once it goes into effect, at least according to what was presented in the environmental assessment, all inbound um, lanes are to be subject to tolls, except those who are using the upper roadway that exit onto 62nd and 63rd Street. So there is in theory, the, a likelihood that if people who are not destined to the congestion zone, which is inclusive of 60th Street, um, want to come from Queens to Manhattan and are looking to avoid the toll, they will gravitate towards the upper inbound roadway and create potential congestion at 62nd and 63rd Street exiting the bridge. And that there's the likelihood that there will be additional challenges when it comes to traffic and the need for additional traffic enforcement as a result of that part of the congestion pricing plan if it were to take effect as currently presented. We have a few people who want to comment also on this. Uh, Leah Hanlon from the public. Uh, can we unmute Leah? Hi, ahead, thank Leah. you. Um, I drive down Second Avenue and onto the generally the lower deck twice a week to go to Long Island for elder care. And um, I don't think the problem is at all a lack of traffic agents. In fact, I would be happy if there were no traffic agents. I don't think they help. I think the problem is double parking and standing in the lanes, the two blocks before on Second Avenue before you get to the bridge, <laughs> there are always, well, almost always, very frequently, trucks standing there. Sometimes there are taxis that have like people getting out with walkers and they'll be there for five minutes there. And whenever that happens, the cars can't go through that those lanes that go on to the lower deck, they have to go into the through lanes to the right, and then they have to merge back in. And there's, it's just a nightmare and everything backs up and there's double parking all along Second Avenue. Um, that's the problem. It's not the traffic agents. Having new traffic agents will not help at all because the problem is the street is blocked by parked vehicles. Thank you. Um, Michelle, you, you want to comment? Thank you. Yeah, well, of course, if you had traffic agents, part of the thing they're supposed to do is free up, is, is move along those who are double parked, <clears throat> you know, or not, or not parked legally. But my question was about Judy's request. When you say you want more traffic agents, is it more agents at one time in an intersection or is it more agents scattered through other intersections in the area? And I ask the question because I think it needs clarification because if you put more than one or two, whatever an intersection would tolerate, I can't see that it would tolerate more than two. Uh, one for either side of um, one going east-west, one going north-south, <laughs> you would have mass confusion of what the travel traffic agents are doing. Um, and if you're asking for additional locations, that's uh, another issue. Also, <clears throat> this business of if congestion pricing is put into effect, those people who are coming from Queens to New York who would like to avoid the toll going into the zone will exit to go north to 62nd or 63rd. No, if their intent is to go into the zone 
at some point, no matter where they exit that bridge, they have to come back around the street and go south into the zone. So if you want to go to 43rd Street, it's of no benefit to you to exit to 63rd Street. You're not avoiding anything. Uh, the only way you're avoiding something is if you're changing your locate your de your destination and you're not planning to go into the zone. So there's always traffic uh, <clears throat> exiting 62 and 63 because of the turns and the backup from Second Avenue. Especially, you can make a pretty quick turn down 62nd and get to First Avenue. The backup is when you cross and you go to 63rd and you try to go west and then. You've got the intersection blocked by the traffic on 2nd Avenue so that 63rd Street can't move. And that ba backs up all the way to the bridge exit. But it won't that that's a different problem. It won't be increased by people going north because they really want to go south. So I don't see that. But if Judy could just address what she means, more locations or more people at a location or That'd be no, good. Uh, well, my, first my, place, let me let me just say that when they come off and they at 62nd and they go up First Avenue, the traffic is unbearable. They're going uptown. When they go across 63rd Street, a lot of them are going uptown. They're not going down into the zone. So right, or well, they wouldn't uh, exit that way. Correct. Or they wouldn't exit that way. Correct. So it's going to be even worse because people who may have found it more convenient to use some of the other roadways and then go north, now we'll no longer do that. They will all go to 62nd and 63rd. As far as the number of traffic agents are concerned, we have two agents at 59th and 2nd. Half the time, they're not there. They're talking, they're, they're on break. I've stood there for a half hour, an hour, watch them. They are not directing traffic. You could have four agents there easily on 2nd Avenue coming on and going off the bridge. And don't forget, you now have a bike lane on the east side coming across um, the bridge entrance and exits. So it, that's become a really, really bad, bad intersection. Uh, 1st Avenue, York Avenue, um, from 60th, up to 63rd Street from York Avenue and on certain blocks all the way over to third, particularly 62nd, 61st. Um, we need to have traffic agents because traffic on third gets messed up, traffic on second is messed up. And it's it's just a nightmare. If you live here and you walk around the district, you see it on a daily basis. And not that I'm against bike lanes, I'm not. And it's great what they're doing for the bus people to give them a separate lane out. But all these bike and bus lanes, it's less, fewer lanes for the car traffic to go. So therefore, more tie up because we do. I just listened to a news broadcast at six o'clock before this started. And they talked about all the um, Ubers and the Lyfts and, and you know, the cars that take people, how many more of them there are out on the street and how it's uh, uh, making congestion far worse. Are, are these agents around the clock? Are you calling for more shifts or do we I'm already have around the clock them From shifts? early in the morning and depending on the location until seven or possibly nine o'clock at night or 10 o'clock at night. And it sounds like you're asking for better on training. on 63rd Street. And they all need retraining. There's no question about that. Yeah. Well, I, I think, look, we're not going to resolve. I don't think you need a resolution. Here. No, we're not talking about that. I don't yeah. think so either. I think that we need to get, we need to let DOT know this is a very serious matter. We need to get them together with the police traffic safety, and we need to get Community Board 8 people, a few people in that meeting and talk about what can be done. And I think doing it now before congestion pricing would be a smart move. <clears throat> okay. All right. Thanks. Sharon, I bet Pope Marshall had her hand up and then Boaz will go to him. Go ahead, Sharon.
Thank you, Chuck. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, first of all, Happy New Year, everyone. I uh, very much support additional traffic enforcement agents. I have uh, found that they are extremely helpful with traffic flow and also the prevention of crashes. Uh, they, uh, from what I have seen, they have done a phenomenal job um, in much the same way as the uh, ticket people have done a phenomenal job and do a phenomenal job as well, I can tell you from experience. Uh, with that said, uh, having, uh, having walked by that corner, that intersection by the Queensboro Bridge for over 40 years um, and counting, I can tell you that is not additional cyclists, that is not additional buses, that is, it is solely additional cars. I do not believe that traffic enforcement agents will be able, no matter how many that are there, they can help, certainly, and I would support that, uh, additional traffic agents, because of what I said previously, they help with uh, the flow, but it's overwhelming. You can put 10 there, you can put 20 there. My experience with that particular intersection is that there has been and continues to be a phenomenal increase in traffic. And that happens uh, from early in the morning until after one or two o'clock in the following morning. I mean, it's, it's, it's really all day and well past midnight. This is not to, I, I, and I, this, this is not to put a damper on requesting additional traffic enforcement agents, uh, specifically because I believe that they are phenomenally, phenomenally helpful in preventing crashes. I have seen that, so they perform a public safety function, um, if you will. Uh, but the other, uh, the other side of that coin is that uh, they are helpful in directing traffic with, with what is there. My, uh, from my viewpoint, there's just been an explosion of cars over many years, and particularly the last three years. Okay, thank you, Erin. Um, can we go to Boaz, Galil, Boaz? Can you Boaz? Hey guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the time. Um, so really quick, uh, I, um, what Sharon just said, I sign every word. I think that the issue in the last three years, and this is the data that more people are using cars and less people are using pub public transportation. Um, what triggered me to raise my hand is just, and again, I don't think that she did it in purpose, but Judy uh, Schneider said something, ah, those bus people, those, you know, the, mi the minority that use the bus. No, the min my min minority, in Upper East Side are car owners. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chuck. The majority are the, are the people that are using the bus, the uh, public transportation. Uh, we are the majority. So um, we need to be part of any, if, if there is some kind of a small uh, um, discussion you guys are doing with the decision makers, make sure that there are people over there that are using the public transportation. Other than that, thank you very much. Great discussion. Thank you. Thank, thank you, boys. And I hope that, um, Colleen, that you'll be able to 
arrange some kind of a discussion with uh, traffic enforcement and DOT that we can, you know, uh, be part of. So you'll let us know. Okay. Next on our agenda is something that's been around and we put it off because we had so we were very busy. But um, when when we got to be looking at the situation on East End Avenue in the 80s up and up, you know, from maybe 80th Street to 90th Street, we noticed that in the, the cul-de-sacs, there were sort of a, a mishmash of traffic regulations and and you know and some of them were i think it came to us because someone wanted to change the, in one of the cul-de-sacs wanted to change the traffic uh, regulations and uh, you know there's issues of if you get in there how you can turn around and things like that and so uh craig and i um went and looked at all of them and we thought that uh, we ought to suggest some changes to the traffic regulations in those cul-de-sacs. And Craig, why, why don't you, maybe you can get into a little more detail of what we were talking about here. Right, so in, I believe it was in July, we yeah. passed a resolution based on requests from some local residents to address the issue on 82nd Street. And yeah, uh, the issue is, in essence is that without no standing zones at the dead ends, at the cul-de-sacs, you have illegally parked vehicles and emergency vehicles aren't able to access the, the streets or easily turn around. So we were wondering whether we should be making that a consistent policy across all the cul-de-sacs, um, which seemed to be more of an issue, I believe, if I recall, on 83rd Street and 84th Street rather than yeah. 80th and 81st Streets. Because on, on 83rd and 84th, either there's only one side of the street that has no standing um, going all the way to the dead end, or there, or neither side has it. I'm, I don't recall, unfortunately. I was trying to look, look that up before. But either way, it's the same issue where um, vehicles may have a difficult time making the turn. So we thought it would be appropriate to have a, at least a, a one or two spaces worth at the end of the block that would be no standing rather than um, something else. In the turnaround area, uh, right at the end there where it sits there. Where where you would have to turn around if any kind of a vehicle came in there. Uh -huh. um, any any for any discussion on that, Michelle? Yeah, so I remember discussions on this, and even at a time when we were putting in the new steps, uh, there are entrances right. to the promenade there, right. and uh, there is also one of the buildings has their service entrance there and their garbage collection there. I don't remember if that was 82nd or 83rd. 84th Street, we had very minimal discussion of. My recollection is neighbors uh, did not come to us with 84th Street. The issues were 82nd and 83rd. So what I would say, I would not wanna see a broad-based resolution on all of these because I think even though they're all cul-de-sacs, each one is a little different. So I would like to see if we're gonna have a resolution on a specific one that we know is problematic. I don't recall the neighbor who came, if they were from 82nd or 83rd. Um, I think 82nd, Michelle. Was it 82nd? Yeah. Um, but that's what I would address, 82nd. And I think, <clears throat> If you want to make it no standing just at the turnaround points, right, right. Um, I and think that would make sense. And 82nd has been addressed. 82nd's been addressed. I think it's really just 83rd and 84th, I think. That we so you mean 82nd do. Street at this moment has no standing? Right. At the or, end of or, the or we, we passed a resolution to that effect in July of 2020. Yeah. We passed okay, the because resolution. Those, because those were the neighbors who came to us. So that's right. why we Correct. addressed it. Correct. Okay. 
83rd Street, um, is it number one, is it the same width? And number two, has any neighbor come to us? Has anybody come to us for 83rd? Uh, I don't believe so, but it's the same kind of situation as 82nd, actually. But, you know, I hate, I hate to do, you know, enforcing on things that are not problems. You know what I mean? So <laughs> well, I, sort I, of it, think, I guess it depends how you identify what's a problem. Well, if nobody, has, I think what I would like to do with 83rd Street uh, here, I assume this was posted on 83rd Street. Uh, what I would like to do is have somebody here from 83rd Street. So can we lay this over and yeah. post it specifically at 83rd Street? And, and well, we're talking ask, about 80, 83rd and 84th. Well, and 84th <laughs> is a different configuration, even though it's a cul-de-sac. It flattens out. Am I right? Am no, I right? Yes. Yeah, it no, flattens it flattens out. out. It flattens out in terms of the steps. It's yes. So there's no dumping, yeah. but there's no. It's, it's like not a, a continuation. There's like no dumping onto, you know, bicycles onto 84th. It's not the same possible concerns as 83rd. Um, but I, I think there's nobody here from either of those streets, and I, no, I don't I know. Understand. Was it, yeah, was any was this posted in front of those buildings? Do we know? I don't believe so. I think we just wanted to talk <laughs> about it first and then and then we'll post specifically for those areas. Well, I would I anything. would I think this is our discussion that we need to hear from those people and I would propose laying this over, um, yeah. putting it yeah, appropriately and then and then noticing those blocks specifically. Yeah, no, I agree. We wouldn't we wouldn't pass anything like that without noticing them. Um, so, so we could we could easily and and if need be, since I live only a few blocks away, I I could put it up one <laughs> myself if if necessary. I could put something up there that says um, um, public hearing next month on. Well, it has to be the official notice of the community. Right. Board. Right. 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 Yeah. Of right. course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It, it wouldn't be a, it would be like the placards. No, that's right. You can't make your own. <laughs> right. right. No, but rather than having to send staff yeah, out. Yeah, you could do it. They could email you. Yeah. Yeah. The, the um, do we want to. On their letterhead. We will, we will lay it over. You want to, Alita, did you want to say, Alita and Valerie maybe want to make a quick comment or something? Yeah, I just would like to say that it's a little hard to follow the thinking of the committee because here, um, emergency vehicles are really important, but with open streets and open restaurants, they're not so much important. So it's just um, it's just hard to to understand the consistency or see that there's any consistency because the ambulances and fire trucks have talked about that they can't turn when there are the sheds at the corner. They can't go down streets when they're closed, and that's all I'm saying. So I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> there aren't going to be any sheds in the permanent program, <laughs> Valerie. Thank you, everybody. Happy New Year. Um, I just, yeah, I. how does this differ just as a point of information betw between this cul-de-sac and the 72nd Street cul-de-sac where we've had people come numerous times to say how unworkable uh, 72nd Street is? Well, we passed some stuff there to deal with that, but that's a much bigger, these are much smaller areas than that. Okay. So yeah, 72nd I mean, Street I, I, is, is, all, is much of it, Due to placards, um, and, well, no, and all the well, activity there related to um, well, it's not really. Pl I mean, some of it is placards, but we just and have deliveries that, and deliveries. Well, we have residential buildings on that street as well as a lot of medical, uh, uh, you know, uh, providers. So we there's constant right, right. drop off right. and whatever. Um, and I just question it, where we pass the resolution. I mean, do, do we know for sure whether there's been a no standing sign that's been put up? For 72nd Street? We no, did no, not 72nd, for eight, the one 82nd. Sorry. 82nd, yeah, we passed the resolution for 82nd, yeah. But I, I, don't, I don't know, know if it has, but well, I don't, maybe you remember. I, I thought there was an email up, but I couldn't find it. Um, or maybe Colleen knows um, 
whether that was approved and the signage is going to change, or maybe that was a different location. I'm just the, the signage is up for the location that we passed the resolution on. Colleen, isn't okay. that correct? That's correct. I okay. mean, I would I would be curious to hear from the people on that block whether that has made any difference whatsoever. Because... I mean, that only went up in the last like three weeks. Oh, three weeks. And I mean, okay. you're talking Christmas time, so you're there's no time for comment. Yeah, we haven't. I guess we haven't heard anything from them yet. Yeah, uh, they were I happy. Mean, they were ecstatic that the sign went up. Yeah. <laughs> they followed well, up with me every month to ask if the sign was going up, and I followed up with Colleen, and Colleen got, uh, I'm sure, tired of hearing from me. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Will. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear about your persistence and that it resulted in an actual action. And now, I, I mean, maybe we could just put it in our tickler file for two or three months, whether there's actually the fact that the sign is there making a difference because, you know, we've got plenty of public hydrants on our street and nobody and everybody parks in front of them, you know, every single day and they don't even get a ticket. So, um, so anyway, I, I, I'm, I think I, I agree with Michelle that this should be laid over. And um, I also think Chuck, I wonder about this in terms of precedent as well, because, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, not, giving, you know, having very special reasons for these no standing signs. I understand them as a concept, but um, anyway, I've said enough. Thank you. I appreciate okay, the- thank, uh, thank you. Yeah, we are going to lay this over and we'll make sure that the, those areas are noticed before our next meeting and we, we take it before we take any action, certainly. Um, okay. The next thing, any updates, uh, Colleen, that you have from uh, DOT? Hey, um, Chuck, the the only update I have is that we're putting together our million paving schedules um, for the spring. So if you have any locations, if the committee have any locations, please give them to um, Will, and I will confirm if those streets are eligible to be paved um, this uh, for the next paving season, which is this coming year. Okay, so this is paving the streets. Is, yeah. I'm sure we can find a number of them. <laughs> you know, we always look to the community for, you know, these hot spots based on complaints that you guys probably received. Why don't we submit those to, yeah, submit those to the board. If anybody, any of the members, the committee members have streets they want to, we'll submit it to Will and and we'll get them into DOT. Um, next, we have older new business. And is anybody, while well, we have, we still have Colleen here. So if anything concerns her, we'll, uh, We'll do that. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we get Alita, who hasn't? You know, Valerie and Michelle just spoke. So why don't we have? We'll get them. But why don't we have Alita first? Thank you very much, Chuck. I'd like. I'd like to um, ask the committee again to look at regulating e-bikes and those mini motorcycles because last week I saw one sitting on the sidewalk on Lexington being plugged into an extension cord that was dangling from a window. So I have um, photos of that that doesn't seem like something very safe, particularly in light of all the battery issues, and it doesn't belong on the sidewalk. So, uh, and I see them going the wrong way up bike lanes. I see lots of things in bike lanes that don't need to be there and on sidewalks. So I would like to ask um, that at some point in the not too far future that the committee looks again at regulating these things because um, there, are, there are significant Significant dangers, and we there we're not as pedestrians protected in any way. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We need to look. We actually need to look and see what the regulatory scheme is uh, right now, since there have been a lot of changes uh, about these. And but we'll take we'll take a look at that. Um, next, why don't we let, let me let's go to Valerie. Uh, Valerie. Well, thank you. I just wanted to say thank you to Colleen about a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how it happened, but the street light at the corner of 72nd Street and First Avenue was literally ripped off of the pole and was dangling. And we made a call and um, within 10 hours it was replaced. So I don't know how it happened. I don't know, Colleen, if you had any follow up on that. but. Um, you know, it, 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 I just wanted to say thank you because that was a very important corner. You're welcome, Valerie. That That is us. And just so you know, we have an emergency division. So whenever something something like that happened, 
you know, reach out to us immediately. Don't even call 311 and we'll get it fixed. We'll reach out to the director um, and get that fixed immediately. Yeah, thanks very much. Okay, uh, Michelle. Yeah, I just wanted to bring your attention to Fairway. I think Fairway needs to come in again and chat with us. I think they're very responsive to us and they they show up and uh, and they, I'm sure they try to put all the right processes in place, but as time goes by and gets further away from our meetings with them, things tend to slack. And there is, for a while it was a little better, but now there is still triple parking there because they will leave their, um, uh, the platforms, the words escaping me, um, in the street. So that takes, up a lane and then their delivery truck is now in lane number two and now traffic is trying to get through on lane number three. I mean, it's a mess. And their inventory as delivered is on the street for way too much time. Now they, they had told us they were going to try to schedule this kind of thing or have a street monitor out there that has one truck in, gets it quickly unloaded, gets that one out, has another one in. We have the same issue with Morton Williams on Madison between 86 and 87. Um, I haven't heard a recent complaint about them. That was a big concern, especially with morning traffic. But these, these delivery issues are not unique to Fairway. In other words, every supermarket in the entire city of New York has to get deliveries. And somehow it's Fairway that just seems to have the biggest mess and the most confusion on both the sidewalk and in the street. Uh, part of it was that they had three forklifts as opposed to just one, which they kept parked. And so that took up the loading zone because their own forklift was there. My recollection was that at a prior meeting, they said that they had gotten rid of two or at least took them inside or something. And there was only one out there. So I don't know about that, but I do think that it would be uh, important for us to bring them in again and let's sort of remind them of what they're stated um, upgraded per protocol was and just to get on that enforcement. We gave them the signage back, did we not? Yes, we did. Yeah, so I mean, and I don't think we can treat them like infants and dangle this in front of them. We're going to take your sign away. You know, I just, I mean, I don't think their loading uh, hours should have been that long from day one. Um, but I don't think we could take it away, give it back, take it away, give it back. It's sort of silly. So I think as all grownups here and, and hoping that they are acting in good faith, that they could go back, come to us, let's talk again and let, let them go back. And maybe they need an additional hire. You know, that's something we don't know. I don't know if they have a person assigned to the street. Um, you know, things are costly these days, prices are going up. That's not an easy thing to ask for, but maybe it would be under okay. consideration. Okay. We've had, we haven't had them back in a while, so we can ask them to come back. Great. Thank you. They've been pretty, they've been very responsive to. They've been the, responsive. That's why yeah. I think they would be responsive yeah. to the fact that things are lapsing. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Paul Crickler. I mean, Paul. Thank you. I just want to uh, support what Michelle was talking about. I think um, there are two things I focus on with Fairway. One is the issue that Michelle pointed out, all the, uh, the parking and double parking in the street makes it so dangerous riding a bike down 86th Street because uh, you're veering into where the cars are coming against you. And the other thing also is the sidewalk outside Fairway is a mess of all sorts of stuff hanging around doing nothing. And that includes, I don't know, eight or 10 bikes, delivery bikes, chained up to all the, the tree fences or the flower bed fences. There's nowhere to park a bike. So maybe one thing they could do in Fairway is get some bike racks put in so the whole thing looks a bit more organized and less, you have to climb around places to get to Fairway sometimes because there's so much stuff blocking the sidewalk. And they should, we should ask them to clean the thing up. And then just 
make it um, a nicer place for everybody, not just where they can dump all their stuff. Okay, thank you, Paul. I'll note that you and if you and Michelle are on the same page here, there really must be a problem. <laughs> Rita, Rita Popper. Let's hear from Rita. I moved for Nabisco and we were store door delivered. So I really know about delivery to supermarkets. I have watched them. I have watched key food. When key food gets a delivery, they have five or six men unloading the truck, getting everything off the sidewalk as soon as possible. And they don't leave anything on the sidewalk. At Fairway, I have seen them, they deliver to Fairway and they don't have enough people, whether they want to pay them or not, obviously, uh, it's an economic issue, is that they leave their stuff on the sidewalk and don't take it inside. And when they get to it, they get to it. And we are the ones who are the brunt of that savings of them. And I don't know what we could do to get them to hire more people or to pay people to stay later and take care of the delivery. That's what it needs to be done. That's why it is not done at any other supermarket in the city. Every supermarket has a way of dispensing and getting rid of everything. So Thank I you. Thank you, Rita. Uh, I think they were doing better, but it's probably, you know, time to get them back as we're a number of people have made the same point, clearly. Um, Alita. Thank you. Um, I'd forgotten this before. Ubers and Lyfts are a real issue, it seems, in terms of contributing to congestion throughout the city. And I don't know if it's something that falls within the purview of this committee or not, but the impact of those cars on traffic and on parking and on congestion seems to be a significant issue. People rail against cars, and I understand that, but not all cars on the street are private cars. A lot of them are cars for hire. And if we had some sense, and, and maybe there has been, and I'm just not aware of it, some sense of how many cars on the street are actually Ubers and Lyfts, how much time they spend on the street looking for passengers and how much additional congestion they cause by double parking and by dropping off at inappropriate locations, I think is, uh, I don't know, for me, I'd like to know, maybe, maybe I've missed it. So if I have, I apologize for taking up this time. Thank you. And and a happy New Year, everyone. Thank you, Lita. I know that I thought that one of the things they were trying to do was provide some places for them to park while they're waiting to get calls and stuff like that. And, and, and DOT had some set aside some spaces for them. Yeah. And I believe New York City does have requirements in place and in terms of reporting and, and there are statistics out there in regards to the amount of for hire vehicles that are that are out there on the streets. Yeah, we I should think. we should try and we should get some facts on them and we'll see what we get it for the committee. Thank you. Okay, anything else, Michelle? One last thing. Yeah, no, I was going to just say I thought I remember when the number thrown out was 20,000. I think that has tripled. I think it's probably about 50,000 was a number I heard. But look, you know, I have to say this situation is is was made by the public and by the agency's policies. Uh, for some reason, the powers that be thought it was much better for people to use cars for hire than their own cars, which if they weren't using it for errands, they would then put in a garage or park it and not use it. It wouldn't be rotating. But all of the policy was so against car ownership, but that didn't address people's need or desire to use a car. 
So what grew up instead of car ownership is car usage. So, and they have like, you know, they're allowed to do this. I mean, this is city policy, don't they? And I don't see why we should be providing parking spots for them. Are you kidding me? For private enterprise, you want to provide uh, parking spots? I'll take one. Um, You know, I don't think that's an option particularly. (laughs) Well, I think, (laughs) you know, I mean. Okay. I, but I, th- I, I think the issue is more that there was a lack of taxis in New York City, and that's when places like Uber and Lyft, I don't think it's people abandoning their cars necessarily. But some oh, yeah, people. taxis have been forced out of business. Try to stand around and get a cab. I mean, you can't even get one. There are far less taxis on the road now. But I think it's the reverse of what you say. I think there are less taxis on the road because there's an increase in other cars for hire. I don't think there's an increase in cars for hire because there were too little taxis. Um, I think taxis got diminished, but of course that's a chicken and an egg thing. We may never know, but um, I can tell you that I talked to taxi drivers and they are devastated with what happened to the value of their medallion, the fact that there's no work for them on the street. Um, I mean, they, as an industry, have gone through terrible times. And where is this other industry, which is far more convenient for people to use, I guess, as a car for hire thing. They have accounts and, you know, they made it much more user friendly and they've usurped the position that our yellow cabs used to have. So, um, I know the cause of all of this, uh, and I know that the solution could probably be to go back to how everything was, building garages in in residences and all that, but all that's been undone and to reverse it would be very difficult. But there's no mystery to me why there's loads of cars on the road. Okay, thank you. There's plenty of data that is out there and there are um, on New York City, website, they have um, raw data available and there are different people out there who have um, visualized that data. So it's something that um, you could search or if you email me, I could send you a link to where some of the information is. It may not break it down on a borough level basis. So we may not be able to hone in on what we're seeing here in our community district or even Manhattan for that matter, but you will see citywide information for yellow taxis and other for hire vehicles. Okay. All right. Seeing no further discussion, I think we can adjourn unless anyone has. Okay. And thanks everyone. And uh, we'll see the board members at our at our full board meeting. So we are adjourned. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. This is not leadership.